The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 868 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. You can now purchase the Tao of Self-Confidence, a guide to moving beyond trauma and awakening the leader within on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, Indigo, and other major book retailers. Get your copy today. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and this is actually going to be our last episode for the season. And I'm really excited to have this guest on because this this is a little bit special. First off, everyone knows that my book, The Tao of Self-Confidence, A Guide to Moving Beyond Trauma and Awakening the Leader Within is out now on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, Audible. And this special lady is actually the narrator of of my audiobook. So I was really excited to know first off that it was an Asian woman who narrated my book. Uh, so I had to invite her in. So she's an, an actress and also a voiceover artist. And I'm super excited to have her on today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Rachel Wong. Rachel, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Hi, Sheena. It's so good to talk to you. It's, I've been waiting so long for this. I was like, I... I'm narrating this book and spending like weeks on it. I have to know who this lady is. She is a powerhouse. <laughs> Thanks for having me. To answer your question, like you said, I'm an actor, voiceover artist. I do film, TV, commercials, and audiobooks now, which is how we got introduced. So it's very exciting. But yeah, I wanted to say congrats on your book launch. Thank you. And you know, when I first heard her voice, I was like, oh my God, thank God you're the narrator. <laughs> You know, I'm so grateful. Her voice is amazing, of course. And I could probably just like, once I listen to the audiobook, it's going to be like therapeutic, right? Honestly, so I'm really grateful that they chose you as as a narrator of this audiobook, especially, you know, we're ending AAPI Heritage Month soon. And it's just having this representation is so important, right? It just shows what's possible for other people, especially for our community, for younger little boys and girls that look like us. And so, Rachel, what's your cultural background? I'm a fun mix. My mom is from Taiwan and my dad's from Hawaii. So there's a lot, there's a lot of, it's, I'm a bucket of fun things. <laughs> I love it. I mean, you can't go wrong. Taiwan has good food. Hawaii has good food. So yeah. you, you get the yeah. best, you get the best of both worlds. What would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Okay. This one was tough to pick. I, the one, the one I like right now is I don't know where I'm going from here, but I promise it won't be boring. This is something that David Bowie said in an interview. I like it because I think we can make all the plans and goals we want, but we truly never know exactly where it's going to take us. And that's really exciting to me. I mean, you're very much a go-getter. I'm sure you can relate to this. Yeah. And, you know, especially in this journey, when we're trying to forge our own path, we have to learn to embrace the unknown. I know culturally we you know, our, our culture wants stability, right? The, the cars, the house, the steady paycheck, getting married, but things change, right? And especially like the pandemic was a huge wake up call for everybody that literally anything can happen at any given moment. So I really love that quote because uh, once I was able to embrace the uncertainty, that's when everything started to happen, right? And so I love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence for me looks a lot like self-worth plus familiarity. You know, just knowing that because I exist, I'm worthy of love and good things and care, plus the idea that there is the honesty to ask myself the tough questions of what I want and what I do not want. It's not a, I think society often poses self-confidence as like a blind narcissism. Like, I find it so powerful to know your limitations and where you need to get better personally and professionally. Like. It just helps because we're still going to make mistakes here and there, but knowing yourself enough to the point where you can trust that you can make the right decisions that are healthy for who you are and who you have become, to me, that's self-confidence. I love that. And yes, you know, we all have some form of limitation. We're not going to be good at everything. And it also gives us the confidence to go out there and ask for help, which is something that is definitely not taught in our culture. You know, it's always seen as a handout or a weakness, but really collaborating together, working together, helping each other out is how we can eliminate the problems we still go through today. So I love that definition that you mentioned. And Rachel, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? 
uh, it was chaos. It was still fun, but it was like utter and total chaos. Looking back, like, it felt like the Wild West. Like, anything could come out of anywhere and anything could happen. I, when I was a kid, I so wished life came with like a tutorial level that I could play that so I could know what all the commands and controls were and what the end goal was. One of my mom's mottos was don't be afraid to ask questions, which is funny that you mentioned questions when you were saying all that. I was like, ah, oh, get out of my head. But also like we're synced. So that's kind of cool. I think when I got the confidence to at least learn how to ask questions because I was so I was painfully shy. I couldn't make eye contact with anybody, couldn't talk to strangers, could barely talk to my own friends. When I was able to start asking questions, I think I drove all my friends and relatives bonkers with all my questions. Like, I felt like I had to pull everybody before I made any kind of decision. I needed 10 votes on where to go to college, where to study abroad, what to get for lunch, what major to switch to. It was, I couldn't trust my own gut. I didn't know what self-confidence felt like. It felt like confidence was like a manufactured part some people came with, and I wasn't one of those people. I think at the core of it, it was kind of an identity issue. I felt like the main thing that set me apart from my peers was my creative abilities, but I was also told by like my elders, like my parents, some teachers, don't become a starving artist. So I was like, cool, so that's one rule to follow, but it like goes against everything that is kind of inside of me. I had my heroes when I was a kid, they were, they were all these like renegades with unconventional careers, and I felt like even though I saw that and I really admired and respected that, I felt like I needed to proverbially color within the lines to borrow, you know, one of the themes from your book and follow this vague path of like being professional and having familial success. And I just, I couldn't reconcile those two things. So I think that's why I felt so confused. Yeah. And I think we all go through that, right? We're taught this one way of living that was passed on literally from generation to generation for centuries. And then if we do anything outside of that, it's we don't know if that's going to be successful or not. And then at the same time, there's always this definition of what does that success look like, right? Is it really what you want, you know, for, or is it what your culture tells you? And every, you know, most women feel that way. They're not sure. They feel trapped. They can't make a decision. Like you mentioned, uh, asking questions is be becomes a fear because we're afraid we might sound stupid. I mean, I'll, I, I ask questions all the time now. I don't even care. I'll even say like flat out, this may sound like a stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, of course, if you don't ask, the answer is no, but you, you never know what's going to happen. And yet yeah, you mentioned, you know, coloring within the lines. I mean, you know, in the book, I talk about how I failed kindergarten and for coloring outside the lines and how that really traumatized me up until my adult life because I always felt like I was a failure. And so doing that inner work, it always made me realize I was just meant to do something outside the box, outside the lines. I was never meant to color inside the lines. And so I just want people to realize they could do that as well. And so what was your aha moment that made you take this path, right? Because, you know, being an act actor, voice art, voiceover artist is not typical, especially in our culture. It's like, why aren't you an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor? But what gave, what was that aha moment that gave you that push to move forward? There are so many reasons why I'm wrong for this. Being like painfully shy wasn't helpful. I was like, why am I, why do I have this like weird like itch to do this? So in terms of an aha moment, like this is a tough one. I think I have trouble pointing to like one particular one. My, my self-confidence journey has been very cyclical. I'm still going through a lot of new stuff right now. Ah, there's so much that I wish I could share. I, I have had a lot of help from mentors and my lovely, lovely therapist. Um, my parents have also been instrumental in giving great advice. And I do not regret asking all the questions that I did. Like, sorry, not sorry. But what really helped me, though, was going through a phase where I started to ask myself questions and get genuinely curious about myself and like building a relationship with myself. <laughs> this is a funny story. I looked in a mirror one day, like, and I was just kind of caught off guard. I was like, whoa, okay, I know that's me, but who is that? Like, it's kind of a strange experience. I think everyone gets it once in a while. It was like a, it's kind of like a pseudo out of body experience because I was just so used to being in my head. Like, as you know, an Asian American, I think we bring a lot of our parents' work ethic. Like, we're focused on getting stuff done, being on high alert, looking out for what could go wrong, making everyone else around us happy, especially as women. I just, 
I spent so much time thinking about all of those things. I didn't know who the girl in the mirror was. Like, I didn't know what she wanted, what her dreams were, what are her passions, what her desires were. And I thought, you know, how silly is it that the person I spend the most time with, me, is somebody I basically have no relationship with? Like, I hadn't, at this point, I hadn't ever seen a therapist or talked to anyone that could, you know, help me with self-development. But it was just like, what if I could have, like, a relationship with myself? What if I could get to know me the way I get to know my friends? And fortunately, like, I'm a huge introvert. I spent a lot of time, like, you know, doing things by myself or going on car rides. And having that time to myself really gave me the opportunity to get to know me. I started asking myself questions. It's like, oh, okay, we're doing this. Do you like this? Yeah, I like this. Or like, if we're hanging out with people, like even in social situations, I was like, how are you feeling right now? I was like, oh, I'm kind of bored. It's like, okay, let's move on. Or like, oh, I really like this person. Like, let's get to know them more. Like, this, she's really cool. Like, let's be friends. And I just discovered, I was like, wow, I, I kind of like her. Like it's, it sounds strange talking in a third person, but I'm realizing like, this is a concept called self-talk now. And it was such a powerful tool for me to be like, not only can I learn to accept myself, but I can learn to kind of like myself too. Like, wow, like this brain in here is real quirky. Like she comes up with some wacky things, but we're like, I'll think some things like, huh, that was hilarious. Like, it sounds very silly, but we spend so much time with ourselves. Like we should get to know ourselves. Why not? Other people do. And why not Asian women? Like we have a voice that is so powerful, so unique. So um, you talk about like a lot of generational trauma in your book, but I also believe, you know, like there are those generational gifts that you also mentioned too, that like, why not like dig into that and dig up some of those treasures and really like enjoy those. So we, Cause like, if you can't enjoy it yourself, you can't share it with other people. Something that I think t this this concept is all very abstract and everything apart from just labeling self-talk. But I think I really like the way Sarah Silverman summed it up on um, her episode of You Made It Weird. It's a different podcast. But she said that she learned to become her own best friend. And I think that's been a really instrumental part. Like that's one of my big aha moments for me. I love that. And I, I was the same too, right? I had to learn to be okay with my own company, going to the beach by myself, eating lunch or breakfast or dinner by myself. Cause for two winters I lived in Hawaii, so I didn't really know anybody, anybody. And so I had to just take myself out. And at first it was weird, right? Because it, I wasn't used to that. And then I realized that I really had to figure out who I was, what I stood for, uh, what I like, what I don't like, really love myself unconditionally. And that means the good, bad, the ugly. And like you mentioned, being your own best friend, because you would never treat your best friend badly, right? You wouldn't be your own. Yeah, you wouldn't treat your best friend like your worst enemy. But yet for us, we constantly treat ourselves like our own worst enemy. You know, we look in the mirror and you'd be like, oh, your muffin top is hanging out of your pants. Oh, you got a pimple on your face. Oh, you look terrible. What is wrong with you? And like that self-talk damages us, right? What we say to ourselves is so important. And so we've got to be aware of the things we say ourselves. we got to learn things like self-love and self-care, which is not taught in schools or in our culture. Yeah. All those things that like we would say to ourselves, like about our zits or like a red splotchy spot or our muffin top, like you would never say that to your best friend. Never. Why are we saying it to ourselves? Yeah. So I love that you mentioned that. And, you know, because of that realization, what's your life been like now? Oh, I feel so much more grounded. I think like part of that comes with with time and with age. But like there is a lot to be said for like the work that the internal work that you do. You know, life is still going to be hard, but I feel like getting having gotten to know myself in such an, um, a deep way, I feel like I have grown my capacity to love deeper, if that makes any sense. Not to say that everything is like sunshine and butterflies, like I think because I think when I when I ache, like when I lose people, like it hurts more because you are aware of how much you miss somebody, for example. But at the same time, there's also the resilience that comes with it. When things that aren't for me miss me, like, yeah, it's upsetting, but I know to bounce back now. I know what I can do to get myself to take care of myself. And then on the plus side, like 
there are joyful moments in life, like when something like when you have an achievement, like your book release or like your friends like celebrating you, like those joyful moments, I feel like are 10 X because you've learned to know and like yourself and you can celebrate yourself in addition to allowing other people to celebrate you. Because like there's so much in Asian culture where it's like somebody compliments you and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Like <laughs> you can't accept it. Like it's it's just not you have to say face, you know, but, you know, if you if you can celebrate and like yourself, like you just can accept those things and it really helps the flywheel spin to help you do more and to love more. I just think, I think my favorite thing that I've learned after this discovery is that I've developed so much more compassion for other people around me. I think the most important thing to me has been learning to be a better friend, sister, daughter, you name it. That's been my favorite thing. I love that. And, you know, I'm glad you're able to um, have the tools and resources now to pick yourself back up when times are tough because yeah, life is tough. You know, life is going to be a roller coaster. We're not going to be a hundred percent confident every single day, but we have the tools and resources to help us pick ourselves back up a lot faster. So I love that you mentioned that. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What'd be that one tip you would give to her? I would say, hi, friend. Take a deep breath and don't be afraid to get curious about yourself. You have a wild, wacky, and wonderful world inside of you. There's you, your consciousness that exists for two to three seconds at a time that feels and watches and has all these thoughts and emotions. But then there's also the person that like you inhabit, that person that you see in the mirror that is made up of your pet personality that's been developed from your experience and relationships and traumas and like all the all the great things in life too. All these things have crafted the person that you are. And I think you should introduce yourself to yourself and get to know yourself and don't be afraid. There's there's a lot to be had on the other side of that roadblock. I love that. That is great advice, especially, you know, for this last season finale, you know, it's just great advice to have, especially for API Heritage Month, you know, as we try to figure out who we are, you know, figure out our actual identity, like who we are as a person outside of our culture. I mean, it's just great to have this advice where we can just learn to be okay with our own company, spend some time to ourselves, uh, find ways to take care of ourselves, love ourselves unconditionally. Because it's so important, right? If we want things to change, of course, yeah. If, if we want things to change, it really has to start with ourselves, right? And once when we can work on ourselves and and have that that confidence, we can we can start helping others in the process. So I love that. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, or maybe they want you to uh, narrate their book, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Uh, yeah, uh, you can DM me on Instagram. I'm Rachel Wong Official. My name is spelled funky, so I'll spell it out. Spell it out. R-A-E-C-H-E-L-W-O-N-G Official. I'll let you do that one on your own. That's the that's the main way. I'm I'm on Twitter a little bit, but mostly Instagram. So you can find me there. You can find me on IMDB. And in regards to narrating for you, yeah, you can just DM me. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. And if you guys need a sample, you can just get a copy of my book, The Tale of Self-Confidence. She is the narrator for the audiobook, And I'm so grateful uh, that I was able to have Rachel as a narrator. I mean, her voice is phenomenal and I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Rachel, you can also head on over to the TaoofSelfConfidence.com and search for Rachel's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Rachel today for taking the time to share her story and wisdom on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Rachel. Oh, thank you, Sheena. This is so fun. No, not a problem. It was such an honor to have you on the show. And to our listeners, just a reminder that this will be the last episode for the season. And we will be back for our new season on September 5th, 2023. So feel free to uh, check out the past episodes. There's tons to binge. And if you like, you can also pick up a copy of the book, uh, whether it's ebook, hard copy, or audio. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up Book by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 